In today's film, we're going to look at the process of assigning a private registration plate to a car in the UK um, and also how to fit the plates to the car. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Wolfie's Wheels. Uh, in today's film, we're going to look at the process of assigning a private registration plate to a car in the UK um, and also how to fit the plates to the car because it's perhaps not as it's not difficult but it's perhaps not as straightforward as it might at first seem so um, here we go you've decided you want to, for whatever reason to to buy a private plate for your car um, and you've managed to get hold of one um, what do you do next so you've got a piece of paper from the DVLA, looks a bit like that, which is a certificate of entitlement. And hopefully you've got your logbook B5 for the existing car. Well, where do you go from there? Um, because on the certificate of entitlement, uh, it says that as soon as you've assigned the plate, you've got to have the new plate fitted to the car. So the first thing you've got to do, of course, is go and buy a new plate. Um, and that's perhaps a bit of a minefield because there are plenty of places out there that sell uh, non-road legal registration plates uh, and it is important to have a road legal registration plate. Um, there's a bit of variety you can still have uh, with the road legal ones um, but again it's, it, it, it's a bit of a minefield. I mean for example the number plate that I'm going to put on Asbo the Abarth is a five digit plate and in theory I, could, I can have it on a, a short plate and be perfectly legal. However, as we'll see when we come to put it on the car, um, I've had to buy the full length plates because of where the um, dealership fitted the original number plates to the car. Uh, in other words, if I put a short plate on, as you'll see later on, I'm gonna have screw holes in my bumper, which will be visible. And then that opens a whole new ball game about how am I gonna get around that? Am I gonna have the bumper filled and repaired and, and sprayed? And it just starts escalating the costs which is not something I really want to do. To get hold of your new number plates, you will have to show to the um, number plate manufacturer uh, the certificate of entitlement and some proof of ID, either driving license, passport, or, or things like that. Um, and if the place you're using doesn't insist on those, there's a high chance that it is actually going to be a non-legally compliant number plate because they must check these documents before they let you have the number. Um, Anyway, here we go. Let's try and assign this number plate to the car and see how we get on. Uh, we go on www.gov.uk and assign a private plate. And, and to assign it, it says you're going to need the certificate of entitlement um, and um, the V5. So you can do it online. So you should just scroll down, apply here assign a new number online. So let's try to do that. So the registration number that is going on the vehicle is, goes in here. And I am the grantee stroke purchaser. Let's put a space in there because it has a space. No, it doesn't need a space. The current vehicle registration number and this to be honest is why I'm changing the number plate I have never been able to remember this number and I'm sick of it uh, latest logbook document reference number and then your postcode right okay so please enter the 14 to 20 digit reference number from your online retention document or V750. And your postcode again. And next, confirm that that's you. I confirm this can go to the vehicle. Yes. Do I want an email with a summary? Yes. Put your email in here and confirm. And there you go. Application successful. I can now put that on the car. And that's what we're going to do next. And so the next thing it says online is that you'll get a new V5 logbook 
um, within the next three to five days. So just keep an eye out for that in the post. But what we've now got to go and do is fit the number plates actually to the car. So uh, let's go outside and, and do that. Okay, so we're now out in the garage um, and we've got here the new number plates to put on. Um, and not only did I buy the number plate, but I also bought a packet of these anti-tamper screws, which basically means you can't unscrew the number plate from the car uh, once it's on, because plate theft for vehicle cloning is not that uncommon, I'm afraid to say. Although I could have had a, a nice short plate made up with just the, the five digits on it, it sat nicely in the middle of the thing. Uh, as you can see here, the screws have been put on right at the end. So if I started to put a short number plate on there, then I'm gonna have holes in the bodywork that I'm gonna to have to deal with. And to fix the holes in the bodywork, of course, is a whole new ball game and not really somewhere I wanna be going. So to fit the number, obviously the first thing we'll do is take the old number plate off. And uh, I don't know what sort of screws are under these caps. Uh, they might be anti-tamper screws for all I know, in which case that uh, can be a bit tricky to get them off. But well, let's have a look and, and, and see where we it's go. A simple matter of just undoing the screws, uh, which went into here and taking the old number plate off. I will give this a, a quick clean underneath uh, before we put the new number on. This glue stuff that's been put on behind the number plate with some uh, sticky pads, so it's sort of bit belt and braces because it was sort of screwed on here and here, here and here, and this uh, um, two-sided tape is proving to be a real pain to get off, but we will persevere. Well, I've been at it about 20 minutes and I still can't get all of these um, old residual glue stuff off uh, and frankly I'm now not going to bother. Um, it's going to be under the number plate. I just thought it'd be neater if it wasn't there but whatever. Um, I think probably I'd need some sort of hair dryer on it or something to warm the glue up but as I don't have one as you can see I don't really have much call for one. Um, it's uh, going to just be one of those things. So what we need to do next is as you can see there aren't any holes on the number plate um, to put the screws through so that's the next job and that's perhaps a little bit uh, trickier than it might first seem uh, because it's important that you drill these number plates through properly um, because of how they're made you've got to make sure you drill from the right side and of course you've got to line the holes up otherwise it's going to look dreadful so let's set about doing that so i'm going to be using the black and decker workmate um, but you put the number plate your new number plate face down on the thing so that you're drilling through to the front, which is a bit counterintuitive, but actually because of the way the number plates are constructed, as the drill comes through, it can force the uh, actual yellow part of the number plate or the white part if it's a front um, to sort of split up a bit where the screw holes go and you don't really want that. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna put the new number plate face down between these things, then we're gonna get the old number plate and lay it exactly on top of it uh, precisely lined up and then just wind the handles in a bit making sure nothing's moved which it hasn't and then as it's all nicely lined up with your trusty electric drill using the old holes as a template I'm just going to mark the holes to start with where they're going to go and then as it's marked up just take the old number plate off the top and then we can uh, drill through with the with impunity so you can see the markings there there there, there and there so we just push the hole through and there you've got the four holes drilled in the number plate so let's uh, attach it to the car. So on the front of the number plate is a um, thin layer of perspexy stuff which you need to just peel off thusly but at the moment I'm only peeling it back roughly where the screws are we're going to leave the rest of it on just for now. The reason for peeling it back past the screw holes is simply 
so you don't end up with it stuck under the screw heads once you've fitted your number plate. So interestingly, the anti-temper screw kit only comes with four anti-temper screws. So you're gonna to have to put uh, two in the front and two in the back just to keep the thing secure. So we'll have two normal ones and two anti-tampers, which will be fine. So it's just a matter of lining the thing up with the holes and uh, doing the screws up. So just put it in to hold it for now. And we'll just put a couple in just to see, make sure it all lines up and that one does. And that one does. So the gods are on our side again. Uh, and let's put the anti-tampers in, which need this uh, special device. I better not lose that because if that, I don't know if it is just a standard Torx thing or not. It doesn't appear to be because it's actually got a small hole in the end then in the screw so I don't think a normal Torx head would fit it so I need to make sure I don't lose this uh, screw anyway let's close up the uh, cap things at the top peel off this and stand back and admire the work that looks all right um, follow Wolfie's wheels on YouTube well, you could always do that. You can always subscribe, um, tell your mates and share it and so on. Obviously, we're going to have the front number plate to do, but I'm not going to film that. It's done in exactly the same way. Uh, a case of take the old number plate off, line the things up very carefully to drill your holes using the old number plate as a template and screw it back on. So to be fair, this is probably the easiest part of the whole process. Not that any of it's been difficult. Something that you do need to think about, of course, is what you're going to do with the old number plates. Uh, and the DVLA advice is you put them somewhere safe because should you sell the car again without the private plate on it or cover plate on it, um, the number the car originally had will be re reassigned to it and it will save you getting a new pair made up uh, when you take the old number or the new number off to put the old number back on, if you see what I mean. Anyway, so that's how we do it on the Abarth. Um, We'll have a look to see how we do it on the, the Tesla next because that's held the number plates on those are held on in a somewhat different way, being a Tesla. Uh, so we'll have a look at that uh, next. Time to swap the number on the Tesla, which, as you can see, has a completely different um, method of attaching. I mean, these are relatively ugly um, plate holders, but they are what we've got. And uh, again, without wanting to make a big job of it, um, we're just going to keep with the with the plan. So, how do we get these on and off? Let's have a look. Well, these uh, are just held in, uh, not very securely, in my opinion. You sort of just have to pull off the bottom part of the plate carrier, just unpop it, go along, take that off. Number plates there. Flex it out from either end, and it's off. So the one that come off is actually aluminium, which I didn't realise, and the new ones are polycarbonate. Um, so they may be slightly thicker, but I think they'll fit in all right. I don't envisage any, any problems. So I'm going to try and do this one-handed. Uh, let's see how we get on. So let's fill the left end, left end in first. Flex the number plate slightly. Push it in, push it up. Get the um, trim piece. And... Uh, Pop it back on either end and then just a matter then I think of filling it in. Clipping it back in all the way along. Like that. That's done, and that is a hell of a lot quicker than doing the bath. Um, a lot less, less kerfuffle. So all we do now is stand back and admire our work. There, job's a good one. All that's left now to do is to just ring the insurance companies to let them know of the change of number plate on both vehicles. Um, Asbo Insurer, I can't do it online, I've got to give them a ring. 
so no doubt that will cost me an admin fee, that's life. Um, and insurance uh, you can do on the Tesla online. So that's what we shall do. So we'll just do that and then be able to use the cars legally on the road. I hope you found that film useful. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, um, tell your mates, etc, etc. Uh, it'd be great, and I'll see you in a future episode of A Wolf is Wheels. Bye.